so today I thought I would talk about um, surfaces and this is a question that I'm asked a lot actually every single q and I do I am asked this question which is the best surface for a uh, subject and um, so I'm going to try and answer that but there's no real definitive answer that's one of the main issues when somebody says to you oh what's the best surface for this particular subject there are um there are a sort of a, a few different scenarios really what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you through quite a few images i'm going to show you the image and i'm going to show you my drawing and i'm going to talk to you about why i chose that surface um the techniques that i wanted to kind of use for them and um and how it worked and whether or not actually i was happy with the outcome so um, one of the main reasons that I will choose a surface is because I've used it literally just before. If I've just finished a drawing on, say, pastel mat, my first choice is likely to be pastel mat for my next drawing, purely because I've got the muscle memory for the techniques. Um, you know, I've got all of that sort of understanding of how pastel mat works. So it's a much easier um transition i guess to move from pastel mat onto pastel mat and the same goes for if you've just used drafting film it's much easier to do your next piece on drafting film because you have the, the muscle memory however there are certain subjects that lead themselves to a certain uh, surface this one i think is a really 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 great example uh, this is a an amazing photograph by uh Janneke stam um, she has given me quite a few photos to work from. This is absolutely just the most beautiful, beautiful uh, photo. And um, and I've drawn these and I've taken some, uh, done some mini uh, videos around this for the Academy just to show how I've done certain things. This photograph here is the perfect, perfect candidate, I think, for drafting film. Um, and the reason I say that is because you've got all of this gorgeous texture there's there's a lot of softness in there but there's also all of this amazing amazing texture in here um and that and that is due to all of these little sort of spiky details the ears we've got all of the texture and everything in the fur uh, we've got this nice softness up here as well which actually we can get really quite nicely with uh, with drafting film this is that's not to say that this isn't a candidate for doing this on pastel mat actually it would be beautiful on pastel mat but the techniques that you can use to create all of these fantastic textures and everything are going to work really 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 nicely on drafting film so i'd use the tombow i'd use the slice tool um you know i'd get my uh, um, values and everything in there and, and the color um you've also got that beautiful sort of soft um yeah, so it's, it's, it's a prime, prime candidate for drafting film. Um, I'm going to show you my drawing. So this is my drawing that I've done on drafting film. You can see we've got all of this lovely detail and everything in here. We've got all of these sort of little ear hairs and everything in there. And we've also got the nice softness in there as well. Now, whenever I... When, I don't think originals, I don't think photographs ever look as good as the original. Um, I think there's always something missing. Um, but actually, I quite like how this one has come out. We've got the softness in there. Uh, we've got the texture and everything in there. And I think this has worked really, really well for drafting film. So going back to that original photo, this is a great candidate for drafting film because of all of that gorgeous texture and everything in there. So if we come on to the next one. OK, so this is this is Annie. And Annie belongs to my daughter's boyfriend uh, family. Um, and I created her portrait as a memorial to her. Now, this is uh, such a beautiful girl, but um, not a very great photograph, as you can see. Um, for me, this kind of photo, I would always choose pastel mat for this. I can get a little bit of softness in there. I can get the depth and everything in there. I can do a bit of tweaking when it comes to the photograph. I can take it into Lightroom and tweak it around a little bit. But for me, this is a prime candidate um, for using pastel mat because of the, the blending capabilities and just being able to get a more sort of um, slightly smudgy look, a more painterly look on the, on the pastel mat. Um, this is my drawing of her here. 
Um, so you can see I've added a little bit of detail, not not a huge amount. We've got, again, you know, photos aren't the best thing. Um, they don't, I always find I struggle representing the original. Um, but you can see I've done sort of quite a nice job representing her uh, from, you know, not the best photograph. But we've still got some light and dark and everything in there. And using the pastel mat, I'm able to get that nice softness in there. So for me, this photo, um, this one is a, a prime candidate for using uh, pastel mat. Now, pastel mat and drafting film are my favourite surfaces to use. They're very, very different. Obviously, pastel mat is an abrasive surface, um, and, and the uh, drafting film is a very smooth surface. So you use very different techniques. So when you come from using pastel mat and then you jump onto a portrait that's done on drafting film, your techniques are going to be very, very different. Which is why I said at the beginning, usually what would happen is I'd stick to. Um, you know the surface I was using previously so the majority of my commission works are done on pastel mat um, purely because it is my absolute ultimate favorite um, uh, surface so if we come on to this is Aggie uh, this is my brother's dog this is my own photograph um, now this you could you could do this you could do this on any surface I chose to do it on pastel mat again um, actually the, the, the dog, if I was just drawing the dog on its own, again, this would be quite a nice subject for doing on drafting film because you can get in there with the Tombow, you can get in there and get all of those, the lovely textury details and everything like that in there. Um, but because I decided to do the background as well, um, I felt that actually this was a really great candidate for pastel mat again, because of the, um, the woodwork up here and because of the stonework down here. Um, this is much, I find, much, much easier to do on pastel mat because I can blend it. I can, um, you know, just layer a few colours in and then smudge it around a little bit and it and it ends up looking like brick. Um, so if I need to find, nope, there she is. So that's my drawing. Um, and again, you know, this, I could use the texture of the pastel mat to be able to get all of that lovely, you know, graininess on the stone and on the the brickwork here and still get you know Aggie looking like a like a dog I can also get all of this beautiful depth in here in the shadows and the um you know the detail in the wood you know of course this is going to work on any surface it whatever surface you prefer you may be a hot press person and you may love hot press and and actually you know the techniques that you use would using hot press paper would benefit you because of the techniques you use um and i think there's there is always a i think there's always a preference so i think we always have a preference for a surface although when it when you're just starting out it's very difficult to kind of know what your preference is because you maybe only used one sort of paper or you've gone i'm going to use that i'm going to use that i'm going to use that and maybe you've used like tons and tons of papers but be, or surfaces but because you haven't given it um enough time and done enough drawing hours on one particular surface you know you could have started on pastel mat and go i absolutely hate it i detest it it's too grainy it eats my pencils all of the usual stuff that people say about pastel mat and you know it's um that can that can really put you off a surface but actually we all know to get used to something to be become proficient in something we need to uh you know we need to spend time drawing on it and a pastel mat you know when i first started drawing on it i was like oh my goodness what on earth is this and it took a, a good few tries until i understood how to use it and, and work it and everything and it's now my favorite surface the same with drafting film you know you start with that and you think oh blimey how am i gonna do this um but as soon as you get into it and you start to understand the techniques and everything then you know um so i'd say if you're somebody looking at surfaces and you're thinking i haven't really got a favorite i would probably look at picking something and doing a few pieces on it so you really really get to grips with uh with the surface personally i can't um, if somebody gives me some a surface to try, I have to do a whole portrait on it. I can't just do a few swatches and go, yeah, you know, this is about it and that about it. I have to do a whole portrait on it. Um, okay, so um, another of my photos, this is little Merlin. Um, he was another um, memorial portrait. Again, this one could be on, on any any surface, really. Um, you know, I could choose to do him on pastel mat. I could do, choose to do him on uh, drafting film. 
both of them would work really nicely we've obviously got those beautiful curly ears in there little um spaniel um we can get the beautiful softness on the pastel mat and we can get the the fantastic sort of texture and everything if we're using drafting film so um if this just came up and i'd been using drafting film previously i'd be like yep yeah, no brainer i'm going to do this on drafting film and exactly the same as if i was doing it on pastel mat if i hadn't been drawing for a while and i had to choose it would definitely be a toss-up uh, you know between the two i have actually chosen to gosh where is he there we go i chose to draw him on pastel mat um Again, I was using pastel mat before. I love pastel mat; it's my favourite surface, um, and I, I really like the softness that I can get um, with pastel mat. So I choose to draw him on draw him on pastel mat. I can get the depth of colour. I can get all of that lovely curliness in his ears. Um, I use a very different method to get the curliness on pastel mat than I would if I was drawing on drafting film. So I would still use a little bit of subtraction, but I'd use my putty eraser to kind of form these lovely soft curls. And I'd really uh, use my values to create all of the shadows underneath. Whereas if I was doing this on drafting film, I'd kind of get more of a base layer down and then I'd pull all of these areas out with a Tombow and a slice tool. Whereas with pastel mat, I don't really ever use a slice tool for fur. I tend to use my pencils and um, the kneadable eraser. Um, so he was done on, on pastel mat. Um, and then we have the little girl that I've just drawn. So this is the reference photo. So when I look at this, if I think about what I wanted to do with this and I wanted to put a bit of a background in not necessarily copy it exactly I wanted to put a bit of a background in um I can't think of anything worse than doing a background on drafting film <laughs> unless because I, I don't use pastels I can't use pastels because of the dust so I can't use pan pastels I can't use soft pastels I can't use pastel pencils I, I don't like the feel either that it makes me feel very strange um so doing a background on a uh, drafting film would mean that I'd have to get my neopastels out, which, you know, would work quite well. Or I could slip like a printout underneath something like that. When I look at this, this subject and I look at the smoothness that's in here, when I think about drawing something on drafting film, this smoothness here in the coat, the smoothness of her skin, Although, of course, it can be done on drafting film. Absolutely, there are some amazing portraits done on drafting film. For me, getting something really super smooth on drafting film, it's not a particularly enjoyable process for me. It's just, I just don't really enjoy it. However, on pastel mat, it's like going to my favourite party. <laughs> Which sounds really weird, doesn't it? But sitting there and just working and working and working and getting this, the smoothness in the coat and the little wrinkles and everything. For me, pastel mat is absolutely perfect for this kind of thing. And the same again for the texture, you know, on her uh, on her shawl here, on her scarf. We've got the, the slightly out of focus bit over here. We've got the texture and everything in the scarf here. And then, of course, we've got her skin. So I'll just bring... Um, where is she there she is so this is my this is my version so i bought the um i bought the background in the background isn't super smooth and i didn't want it to be super smooth i wanted there to be a little bit of texture in there i did want her coat to be really nice and smooth and i think i've i i'm really happy with this this is my second uh, person people portrait um and i'm really happy with how her skin uh, has worked as well i also found it much much easier working on the uh, out of focus portions of the scarf you know the details aren't perfect if you look at the reference photo the details are not perfect and they're not exactly the same as a reference photo and that was never my intention I just wanted to kind of see if I could do this see how how it would work out um, and I absolutely loved drawing this I, I just loved it every single minute of it I just loved I just loved it this bit here is one of my favorite areas which might seem a bit strange, but really, really working those values in to get a feeling of the neck and a bit of the collarbone by just using value. You know, there's no real detail or anything there. It's just colour and, and uh, you know, and values. And, and I love that. Absolutely love drawing that. 
if I'd drawn this on drafting film, I think it would have been okay. I have no, I have no doubt it, it would have been okay. I really honestly don't think I would have enjoyed it as much, um, purely because of all of the smoothness that goes on. And I find that quite a challenge on drafting film. Other people who, you know, draw people on drafting film, they, they maybe have different techniques to me and they, they, you know, they find that much less of a challenge. But for me, this was a no brainer to use pastel mat for this, using the needleable eraser up here to create the texture and the light and everything. Um, and um, yeah, it, it was just, that's, that's kind of what, how I decided. Um, and, and for me, that is definitely a, a, a deciding factor. You know, if, I, if I've got a bit of a toss up between them, oh, I don't know which one to use, I will look at texture and I will look at smoothness. If there's more, so if it's a horse and it's got a really shiny bridle, I'm going to use pastel mat because the shine on the bridle is going to be much harder and not as enjoyable on the drafting film. If it's a, um, a, a, a crazily textured dog, um, I'm likely to use drafting film or the bear that I drew. I'm likely to use drafting film because it's got all of that incredible texture and everything in it. So that's how I choose, um, you know, what surface to work on. You'll notice that there isn't really any hot press on there. And that's because hot, I do use hot press for tutorials. Um, it's not my favorite surface at all. I find I have to burnish you know, quite heavily, and that then puts a strain on my joints. I like to use a surface where I can use a really gentle pressure, and that's what I've that's what I tend to do with all of my drawings. Use really, really gentle pressure. Um, so I'm hoping that that's going to be useful for you in um, making your mind up as to um, what surface you're going to use. <laughs>